English has been called the language of business and science, French the language of Molière, of intellectuals, diplomacy, culture and romance. And how the French language became all these things is told in the book, The Story of French. It's written by two Montrealers, Julie Barlow and Jean-Benoit Nadeau. Julie Barlow joins us now. Welcome. Thank you. I thought it was a fascinating book. You know, there's so many things that I never really thought about because here in French we just see it in a political context and yeah. we don't see the languages as the, the sort of the, the living thing that it is all over the world. Yeah, you yeah. describe it as the story of French is, is one of living dangerously, which I think is a great line. What do you mean by that? Well, I think that on one hand, you know, the French is definitely seen as a language in decline right now because of English becoming more and more influential in the world. What we discovered, we set out to write a book about the story of French from the perspective of everybody that speaks it, so we traveled to 15 countries. Um, is French living dangerously right now? You know, we discovered that it's a very vibrant language with a lot going on. Um, a lot of the reason it's perceived as a being in decline is, I mean, it's, it's, it's a perception more than a reality in lots of cases, particularly in France. You know, but the thing that, that I also found interesting about this book, because I love history, is that because French is just spread out all over the world, when you're telling the story of a language, you're also telling the story of, of Africa, of Asia, mm -hmm. you know, of North yeah. America and of Europe. I thought that was fascinating. Yeah. Well, and again, it, I mean, it was, it, was, it was definitely what we wanted to get across. It, it's funny because the story of French has never really been told in, in English before, mm -hmm. and particularly not from the perspective I'm most books on the French language are very much about France. But we discovered French was, well, you know, being exported in the 11th century already. It was the uh, language of the English kings for four centuries. And, you know, it's always been a very big part of French that it spread across the world. And I thought it was just a Quebec phenomenon, you know, when you'd read all these newspaper columnists lamenting about the state of the French that people speak. Uh -huh. And yet, it's, it's not just Quebec, isn't it? Is it what, what is it? You called it them. Um, the French is one of those languages, they call it a monument, a work of art. It's real sort of, I don't yeah. know, purists or yeah. are very unforgiving. Well, it's interesting because the, the question of the norm, you know, English speakers often sort of take offense to the idea that the academy or so it's perceived as controlling the language. But that's a real strong value among all Francophones. Uh, they're very, very much attached to that idea of, a, of, of it being a defined language and being a... And it's one of the reasons that French did spread across the planet and one of the reasons that it's still, you know, not, I would say, being threatened as much as people think. And you say that the, the last chapter is yet to be written? Yes. Where do you see it going? <laughs> well, in the next, you know, we've been asked a lot about sort of where we see French going in the next 20 years. And I'd say that, you know, the, the answer is there are a few, um, there are a few, there are a few things that, that, that in the next decade or so we'll see. You know, one of them is whether or not the French take a strong leadership role. Right now the French are sort of down on French, the French themselves. And um, they very much ignore what's going on around them in the Francophonie. I mean, there's 175 million French speakers in the world. And the French sort of see them as something other than themselves. Uh, my guess is that they'll clue in and see that there's this huge network of French activity, economic, cultural, intellectual activity going on, and that they'll uh, get back on the train and join back into the Francophonie. And you're from Ontario. You really love this language, don't you? Well, it I really comes to, through in the book. <laughs> I do love the language. I mean, I, I, I learned it because I fell in love with a Quebecer and married him. It's a good reason. Yeah, it was a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> and then I discovered all this stuff afterwards. So all the, you know, it opened a world to me. And it's been, uh, it's been a great trip ever since. It's a fascinating book. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. We'll be right back.